In Tuesday's Liberia presidential runoff election is expected to begin today Wednesday. As Denise Nipson reports from Monrovia, the poll was marked by a low turnout in several parts of the country. Many Liberians were surprised at the low turnout, but some said voting was peaceful and went smoothly. They compared it to the first round on October 10 when many struggled to cast their ballots because of the huge turnout. The voting process, which started at 8 a.m., ended by 6 p.m. in line with the election guidelines. National Elections Commission, also known as NEC Chairperson Devieta Brown Lansana, told the nation that some party agents were making unacceptable demands. Some party agents were demanding the polling staff to read out the names of voters prior to voting so that the voter is identified in the final registration role, FRR, in possession of political party agents. The commission clarified that this is against the polling and counting procedures and it had the propensity to expose voters to undue scrutiny by unauthorized persons, thereby jeopardizing the protection of voters. Such action also compromises the secrecy of the voting process. Brown Lansana announced that the counting process will begin today, Wednesday, to be followed by preliminary results. The commission remains committed to ensuring that all votes count just as they were cast. In the meantime, the commission informs the two contesting parties and observers that the tallying of votes will begin tomorrow, 15 November 2023, across the country. Preliminary results will be read at the daily press briefings. Oscar Blow, the head of the Election Coordinating Committee, also gave the group's preliminary report and commended the elections body. The availability of election materials and the logistics arrangements were improved as compared to the first round of voting, and the process has been peaceful despite a few minor incidents. Former Nigerian President Gulag Jonathan, who is also head of the West African Elders Forum, admonished Liberian youth to maintain the peace. The Liberian youth, that this country belongs to them, cannot fight. They should think about how the economy of this country will improve so that they will have opportunities to work. About 2.4 million people registered nationwide, but only 1,949,155 voted in the first round. Some Liberians are wondering whether yesterday's low turnout may even be lower and ask if that could affect the result. For VOS Daybreak Africa, I'm Denise Nipsey in Morovia, Liberia. The Nigeria Labor Congress, the Trade Union Congress, and their affiliates began another nationwide strike on Tuesday despite a court restraining order. There have been strikes this year over the federal government's suspension of fuel subsidy and unions' demand for a new minimum wage for civil servants. Benson Ukpa is the head of information and public affairs at the Nigeria Labor Congress. He tells me that the latest strike action is about an assault on Labor Congress President Joe Ajeru while leading a protest in Imo State against the non-payment of salaries and pensions. This strike is a spillover from many unresolved issues, including Imo and other outstanding issues, non-payment of salaries, pensions of workers in Imo in excess of uh, 20, 30 something months, declaration of some workers as ghost workers, even as they continue to go to office. And of course, we're aware of the induction and torture of the president of the Congress by the Nigerian police force. I mean, for doing nothing other than the fact that since government of Imo State was not ready to abide by the agreements it voluntarily entered into, the next line of action available to workers was um, a peaceful protest. In fact, that protest hadn't even started when they pounced on him, blindfolded him, beat him up, tortured him, that led to uh, both physical and non-physical injuries on him. Yeah, beyond this, you also are aware that um, we had made the demands on the government as a result of um, its ill-advised subsidy removal policy and the massive uh, devaluation of the currency, all of which have combined to visit to the citizenry mindless 
social violence. So it is a combination of these that compelled us to take this action. I will return to some of the issues you raised, but uh, you are going on strike when the courts have said that uh, you should not be on strike. Well, let me tell you something. Our right to strike is guaranteed by the law, and um, the court ought to recognize that fact. That's one. And you know one thing? Each time we are on the verge of a strike action, the government uses the courts to frustrate that and yet will not address the fundamental issues. And let me just explain to you. A restraining order cannot be equated with a perpetual injunction. A restraining order is a brief window for the parties to quickly I mean, resolve some contentious issues. But when that now be- becomes a weapon, of course, we will ignore it. So back to your president, Mr. Ajero, you mentioned how he was... Uh, mistreated in Imo State, but the the suggestion was the protest he was calling for was intended to influence or to scuttle the re-election bid of the governor there. What do you say to that? You know something, uh, Mr. Botti, a tiny elite that um, acquires power through the back door is always unsure of itself, and we read a thousand meanings to its own shadow. It is paranoid and has homicidal instincts. I mean, these issues have been pending since 2021, and we exhausted all processes, all opportunities to have them peacefully resolved. These matters even went to court, and the state asked for a window, and the court granted this. And when we reminded the state this matter has been overdue. The state put in writing to say that they have been very busy to attend to these issues. I mean, these workers, pensioners who have been without pay for so long, so they should die because an election that is not even an election was about to take place. That guy didn't even win that election in the first place. Ben Singh Upa is the head of information and public affairs at the Nigeria Labour Congress. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed on Tuesday reiterated his pledge not to invade neighboring nations over the Red Sea, but instead that his government would not abandon its demand for port access. Abiy's remarks last month about the Red Sea raised regional concerns, particularly as tensions emerged with neighboring Eritrea, which has a long coastline. In a television speech on October 13th, the RB said that landlocked Ethiopia is a nation whose existence is tied to the Red Sea, a key waterway for global trade. He said Africa's second most populous country needed access to a port, adding if we plan to live together in peace, we have to find a way to mutually share with each other in a balanced manner. Since then, Abi has sought to alleviate regional fears, telling a military palade two weeks later that Ethiopia will not pursue its interest through war. We are committed to mutual interest through dialogue and negotiation. On Tuesday, Abi told lawmakers we want to reassure everyone that we have no plan of invading others, but we will not be ashamed of again fairly requesting port access. Abi's previous comments raised concern in Eritrea, whose information ministry last month released a statement describing discourses about access to the sea as excessive. On Tuesday, Abi said, we have no intention of breaching others' sovereignty, but we ask just discussion about access to sea. We don't know what will happen in the future if Ethiopia's demand for access to the sea isn't resolved peacefully today, he warned. Ethiopia lost its coastline after Eritrea broke away from Addis Ababa and formally declared independence in 1993 following a three-decade war. It enjoyed access to a port in Eritrea until the two countries went to war in 1998-2000, relied largely on the Djibouti for imports and exports. 
Abi won a Nobel Prize in 2019 for his reapproachment the previous year with Eritrea, whose troops later backed Ethiopian forces in a two year war in Tigray. But relations have appeared strained since the Tigray conflict ended in November 2022.